All right, we are live. What is up, everybody? Aaron the Dog back with his LFA 136 breakdown show with Lucky Locks Picks himself. We're here a day later than I anticipated, but it's all good because there was plenty to research on this fight. Definitely an interesting card, top to bottom, headlined by Italo Gomez, who's making his return from his debut. That it was a solid win, you can say that. Uh, making a trip down to 145 now, taking on Wellington a Predator or Re Wel Wellington Prado, also known as. Um, right off the bat, uh, before we get started, Lucky Locks, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, you know, these Brazil cards are always, they always deliver entertainment-wise. A lot of these guys have a lot of finishes, so probably uh, see a bunch of guys with get knockout submissions, all types of stuff. So I think it'll be a fun card to to watch. Definitely looked a little right. better on paper than I think we both would agree it ended up being, but you know it hasn't happened yet, so you never know. We'll, uh, we'll yeah, reserve I, judgment for Friday. Sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did kind of tease this as one of the best LFAs of the year, hopefully. But after the tape, I'm not as confident on that. Uh, definitely a lot of these records, uh, you know, a little bit. I dare I say padded. Um, and I mean, you're seeing a lot of. Uh, with this tape, a lot of these guys, one thing I definitely advise with all Brazilians, search their first name with their uh, nickname. Always do that because a lot of these guys, you're not finding anything, and then all of a sudden you search their first name with their nickname and all their fights come up. Uh, Davi Costa, one of those guys, I believe. Uh, he's known as Davi Bittencourt uh, in a lot of his fights, or it might be another fighter who is known as the big, but either way, um, search the name, search... Uh, acronyms that come up with the names also so um it's interesting though it's it's south Paulo, south paulo versus rio de janeiro top to bottom so i do think that one or two of these fights you're gonna have the big underdog come through i'm not sure where it's gonna be but you're just gonna have a lot of kind of personal kind of stakes attached with these a lot of these guys being familiar with each other from regional scenes and for a lot of these fights you know you're seeing the guys facing their biggest test in this fight because it's a lot of they're facing debuting guys. They're facing guys seven years ago. I mean, it's it's kind of all over the place a little bit. So I think it's going to be a really fun card to um, watch. Betting wise, it's going to be a little bit tougher. Um, I think though. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fights on the main card currently, uh, including uh, the return of Jonas Villarino, um, but he's the second fight from the top. Our first from the top will be at bantamweight, um, and I think this is actually one of the uh, closer fights of the night. And uh, just get my timestamps down here. Uh, but Wallace Lopez taking on guy who's been on a highlight reel, but not on the positive end of that highlight reel. Rafael Costa. If you're thinking I kind of remember this guy, he's the guy who uh, convinced everybody that Jose Johnson should be a minus like what was it 500 favorite against ronnie lawrence on the contender series um something like that uh yeah the same jose johnson who's got quite a few losses at this point i believe it might be close to double digits at this point tough for jose johnson tough for uh Waskar cruz two of my guys but uh yeah rafael costa was the guy who got elbowed and uh put absolutely out clean out in that fight fight was what two three years ago probably at this point so um, not going to hold it too much against the 25 year old. And honestly, it could be a real opportunity to maybe capitalize because he, he was only 20, 22, 23 when that happened. Uh, it was obviously an ugly knockout, but it's the only knockout of his career, 5'6, 73 inch reach for him. He's come back with two straight wins over a very low level of opponents uh, and spread out too. One was in 2020, nearly the end of 2020, so nearly 2021. And then the next was in uh, March against a 7-9 and nine opponent, and it went eight seconds. So, I mean, we the second one, he went to the second round with a 2-8 and eight opponent uh, before he got the knockout. Um, so that's kind of the thing. You see, before, he definitely was more of a grappler in that fight with Jose Johnson. He was doing what you should do against Jose Johnson. He just kind of got caught. I mean... And I think that it made his loss look a lot worse than it was, to be honest. I mean, it, he got caught in the right spot by a really clean elbow that might have been illegal, but maybe it wasn't. Who knows? His other losses, um, one was on, in his debut by inverted triangle and the other one by armbar. So 
um, and against very high level of opponent in both of those. So overall, he's faced a good level of opponent, obviously, until the last fight. Wallace Lopez, a guy who's, um, you know, very, very good grappler, hard hitter as well, 25 years old. So both these guys uh, very young. I think this is going to be a good fight, to be honest. Two split decision losses for him. Uh, good, decent level of opponent besides, you know, the old John Spencer in there, 2-37. and 37. Um, But not outstanding, like 3-0, and 2-0, and 4-1 and one type of guys. 8-2, um, and two, Rango Dos Santos uh, in his last one, definitely one of his better wins. Um, got a knockout in that one. Um, I think a lot of people are going to look at this. Remember, this is the guy who got knocked out by Jose Lopez and have a false kind of belief that he's going to be able to come in and get the knockout. I think it was a really close competitive fight, um, honestly. I mean, Wallace Lopez is a quick starter, but does, you know, kind of slow down. That's what's happened in both of his split decisions. Rafael Costa, I do think, can kind of keep a constant kind of effort going, but he's really got to get that top control and establish it in multiple rounds, which I think could be tough. I do think this is a 29-28. I could see both guys getting around. I think it goes the distance. Um, I think a lot of people are overconfident in – Lopez, but I just don't love the level Costa's faced since losing to Johnson the way he did. And uh, I do have Wallace um, Lopez in this spot, but not enough to bet him. Um, from my perspective, I think this is just one I'm going to watch. But I could definitely see Rafael Costa having a really good kind of gritty game plan and, you know, kind of just eking out a decision here. I don't think he's as chinny as that horrible knockout's going to lead people to believe. So it could be a value spot for some people. Yeah, Wallace Lopez, one thing that, you know, I kind of like about him, especially on this card, is he's a pretty active fighter. Um, so from 2017 to present, he has been pretty active. You know, he's fighting multiple times per year, except for last year. And this is going to be his second fight of 2022. He's got a 100% finish rate. So, you know, every single win, he's got the guy out of there. Both of his losses were split decisions. So, you know, those were, you know, competitive fights still. And he's 25 years old, so still very young, 9-2 record. He's on a two-fight win streak. And Rafael Costa, on the other hand, is also 25, 13-3. So a little bit more experience, not much, but a little bit. Um, he's on a two-fight winning streak coming in as well. And this is actually going to be his second LFA appearance. As you mentioned, he fought on LFA 78 back in 2019, got finished by Jose Johnson. And uh, he has been finished in all three of his losses, but also boasts an exceptional finish rate himself, 92%. And in his last five, he's 4-1. and one. All of those wins he finished. And yeah, I agree. This fight is uh, is really close. And kind of because it's so close, I am going to actually side with the dog and Rafael Costa here. So uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get to the window there just because the line has moved a bit. I don't know how much value there really is uh, left on him. And there are a couple of question marks, but uh, I think I'm going to side uh, yeah, with the dog here and Rafael Costa. Yeah. Do you think there's a little live line movement on Friday with kind of the more casual betters doing the old like Twitter highlight and seeing them twitch on the ground against a uh, now struggling Jose Johnson. Cause I, I was surprised at minus 170 for Wallace Lopez. I was expecting him to be lined over minus 200 to be honest. Yeah. I mean, we might see something. I do kind of feel like it's going to keep going towards Costa, but uh, definitely okay. we could see some people um, going the other way for sure, because obviously that's what most people would know him from. Um, and it's yeah, one of the easier, easier fights to find, I would say, as well. And Lopez has also got a lot of finishes with the submissions as well. So it's not just yeah. like he's finished every win. Yeah. So I think that's a really good fight to start out the card. It could easily have been second from the top, honestly. I think it's one of the better, closer fights. So I do like how they got the line pretty spot on for this, in my opinion. Minus 170 for Lopez, plus 140 for Costa. Love starting out with a disagreement, too. Uh, that always makes me happy. I will never shy away from those, even though our 7 for 7 agreements tend to cash at the window pretty well. Um, this next fight, uh, it's going to be a hard one for me to have much to say about just because we have the dreaded, I couldn't really find much tape on Pedro Lopez. Uh, could you? No, not much. I mean, like you see five and O oh and like champion yeah. and some promotion, but like he's fighting guys that are like two and two for the belts, right? So I don't right. really know how how high level that is. He's still young, to be fair, but yeah, I couldn't yeah, find much. He's about twenty two years old, so it is gonna we're gonna do the old topology kind of run through here. Otherwise, he is a champion with uh and he's off Alvarelli fight team. Uh he's 
fight he's fighting very active once in 2019 three times in 2021 this is gonna be his second in 2022 uh you see the submissions for the most part he did have a close uh closer fight against Clesio Silva would have loved to see it so I could have seen what that looked like but it was against a four and six opponent but his opponents are oh no two and one four and six one and one two and two uh Jonas Villarino here um I do think is coming off a pretty disappointing uh performance uh at least from my perspective I had bought into the 32 year old Brazilian here uh to an extent but I did think Jose Delena was the side completely in that fight but um you know I was still was disappointed I wanted to see a little more out of Bellarino than I did which was really like the forward pressure of Delena really did kind of work his way um before that uh, his fight on the contender series it wasn't great um and that's how you, you know because you get a wheel kick on the contender series and Dana White doesn't sign you there's a reason uh really until then it was you know not all that impressive um I do think pressure and you know cage control is gonna wear down Jonas pretty pretty thoroughly by the second end of the second round if you have that kind of game plan it's just hard for me with a Pedro Lopez where I'm going on blind resume here and um you know it's like i like that he's 21 almost 22 from some perspectives but i really don't like it from other ones um i mean i just can't pick a blind grappler or wrestler guns Jonas. so for me i'm just gonna leave it alone but yeah i don't i don't love you know i don't love Jonas bellarino at this point i'm pretty pretty off expecting a, bigger things out of Jonas, if I'm being honest, but he should be able to put away a guy um, like Pedro Silva or Pedro Lopez, but that's just an assumption based on the level of competition he's faced and base 21. So that's not really a great breakdown. I know Jonas minus 250. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's a good line. It's hard. I haven't seen anything on Pedro Lopez. Yeah, so Jonas is back, man. And uh, you said it, a bit of a disappointing performance last time. You know, it is what it is. Jose Delano is just, you know, I think we both agree just better than him. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's just how that fight is going to play out most of the time. Um, just disappointing that that's, you know, the reality. But, uh, you know, former jungle fight and uh, and first round combat 145 pound champ had a really amazing wheel kick finish on Dana White's contender series. Uh, the rest of the fight, not really as amazing, as amazing, uh, didn't pick up the contract, beat Kane and Kawhi there. Who's a good fighter, but coming off that loss to Delano in an LFA title fight last time out, he's three and two in his last five losses were to good fighters. And this is a guy that has a lot of experience. He does have some really good wins um, in the past as well. Pedro Lopez, bit of an unknown entity coming into this one, still very young, 21 years old, uh, five and zero fighter. 80% finish rate. He's the featherweight champ at DFC, but you know, like he's fighting guys, like I said, that are like two and two in these title fights. So I'm not really sure how, how good of a promotion this really is. We definitely haven't seen him tested against the next level. And I think at this point, we kind of know what we're getting from Jonas here. Um, I think this might be a bit too big of a jump up in competition for Lopez. Maybe he could get some grappling going for sure, but Villarino has, you know, somewhat solid defensive grappling and he is a very big featherweight as well. I think he has like a 75 inch reach something like that. You know, he's big at 145 pounds. So another thing about Bellarino is he's also one of the more marketable uh, guys for these Brazilian LFA cards. And I feel like, you know, he was in the main event before now, like he's down here at the kind of lower end of the main card, not even in the co-main. I feel like they're giving him a chance kind of to build up again. Maybe they'll book him on another one of these shows. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to say because we don't know a lot about Pedro Lopez, but I think he got to lean to, uh, to Jonas Bellarino here. You're, you're muted, I think. Thank you. Uh, it's a blind bet. Good, th good to know the mute button works on the new laptop, too. New laptop, new, uh, still figuring out the setup here. I wasn't sure if that was working or not. Great. It works. Um, but, yeah, um, I mean, we could be looking back at Lopez in a few fights and being like, man, can you believe that guy who came in, you know, kind of a Ronnie Lawrence against Jose Johnson kind of rise, which before last week meant something. Uh, shout out to Saeed Yacoub. Uh, who really showed out there in that fight. That was a great fight. But yeah, I mean, I would I would assume that, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I would assume that a lot of people are expecting the highlight. I think that the LFA is hoping for the highlight. I don't think they want to see a Jonas Bellarino decision. Um, that's not going to be great 
too often, to be honest with you. So, um, Pedro Lopez, uh, with all due respect, we just don't know who you are yet. But this is a good way to find out. Um, should be a good one at featherweight. Uh, this next fight, um, probably my favorite uh, prospect on the card, and um, you'll pro it will be more obvious to know who that is as the breakdown goes on here. But this is at uh, bantamweight here. Uh, Inaldo, Inaldo Santos taking on Jan Matsumoto uh, here. Uh, Sao Paulo versus, it says Sao Paulo versus Sao Paulo here. So we might be getting uh, lied to about the full on Sao Paulo versus uh, Rio de Janeiro. But I will break down Jan Matsumoto first here. 10 and 0 fighter here. Uh, Muay Thai uh, practitioner as well. Ton of Muay Thai tape on him on line there. Uh, as well as his MMA fights, most of them as well. Ten straight wins from March of 2022, his last time he fought. Beat a 13-6 and six Luan Mathias uh, with a really nice guillotine second round. Uh, definitely, uh, clearly has been working on the jiu-jitsu since starting his MMA career. So you, you see the uh, finishes by the KO early, but much more uh, finishes uh, with the submission later. A uh, decent level of competition uh, has gotten better. The Wanderlei Jr. fight, uh, definitely one of the more impressive uh, wins with his F SFT run. Um, but, yeah, guy looks really, really good. Throws a nice variety on the feet, good size uh, for the bantamweight division. Uh, Well-rounded, he's aggressive, he's confident. He's got the old fight booked for after the LFA, which, you know, sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't, who knows, but... Yeah, still really young in his career, very, very confident um, with his strikes, confident on the ground. He's confident everywhere, honestly. And uh, I really do like this uh, matchup here with Cohiba. And now the uh, Sant uh, Santos here, Santos, uh, definitely the smaller, more compact fighter at 5'4", really marches forward, good forward pressure, throws a lot of volume, hooks, you know, not the most technical strikes, but he kind of wants to clay guide you on the feet. He wants you to start throwing back at him. It uh, does leave spots where he can get uh, countered and, I think, beat by more accurate, longer strikers, With which Jan is. Um, you saw the knockout against Matthias uh, Bronze on the LFA uh, prelims. You got to kind of dig for that. That was on the Billarino Delano card. A pretty clean knockout there, I'll be honest. Um, and it was kind of the recklessness of him moving forward. But, I mean, it has worked against some good level of opponents. Uh, Nilton Galvao in his last fight. He was a more lengthy, more experienced, longer kind of bantamweight. And, um, I mean, you just saw Naldo's shots. They kept getting through, kept dropping him in that fight. And Naldo was not the better fighter in that fight, but he's just brought the fight more to his opponent. Um, I don't think he's going to have that same kind of success here with Matsu Matsumoto, but that's how he's going to have to win this fight. He's going to have to make it dirty. He's going to not have to make it a technical kind of – uh, stand-up war, he's going to have to mix in the takedowns. After, But for Inaldo, usually I found he has to have his strikes effective in order for his takedowns, his trip takedowns to be effective almost. Like they're not effective before hurting his opponent. But he definitely can hurt him, but I really like Matsumoto here. I think he's going to put on a show, and I think he's one of the most promising prospects on this card. So I got Matsumoto and bummed when I saw the ticket or uh, the odds because I was like, oh, maybe I've got – of them at one here but nope yeah this should be a fun fight and now you santos uh gene matsumoto santos is a nine and one fighter this is going to be his second lfa appearance obviously we saw him back in march on lfa 126 and he got finished in the first round there but he was riding eight straight wins going into that fight and after that loss he followed it up with a good high level win um over nalton gavayo and he's four and one in his last five fighting good fighters over that span but matsumoto man um is spending some time up at 135 now. The former flyweight became the SFT flyweight champion in 2019. Didn't fight again until 2021. And when he came back, he became the double champ at SFT, winning the Bantamweight belt as well. And then goes over to Fight Pro Championship, wins the Bantamweight belt there too with a guillotine. And, you know, 10-0 and with three belts in his last three fights. I feel like you, you broke this fight down pretty well. I don't really have a whole lot more to add, honestly. I mean, I got to go with Matsumoto here too. Originally... Just when I saw this on paper, I actually kind of thought I might be on the dog here just because, uh, you know, I, I recognize Santos and I remember he had been on a pretty good run leading up to that LFA fight and also had a good win afterwards. So I thought it might be kind of a sneaky dog spot. And 
I still think he, you know, he's not completely out of the fight at this number, but yeah, I got to go with Matsumoto here. Um, I don't think I'm going to lay minus 300, but uh, pure prediction wise, got to go with him. Just he's, I think he's proven his level more times. From his tape looks really good too. Both his Muay yeah. Thai and MMA tape, it looks very, very good. Um, he's definitely very, he's definitely younger. Um, he's grown into. I don't have a doubt that he's grown into the bantamweight frame either, and he's going to continue to. Uh, Santos definitely will be the stronger guy here. He might be able to muscle him down a few times, but I don't think he'll be able to kind of keep that success. But yeah, minus three thirty-five now. Number continues to rise on Matsumoto here. So um, yeah, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the odds makers are on top of this one, but should be an entertaining one regardless. I, one of my favorite fights on the entire card. Um, next fight, not one of my favorite fights on the entire card, if I'm being honest. Um, this one is pretty, pretty rough here, if I'm uh, being kind. Id- Idana, uh, let's see, Silva, which it wanted to keep correcting me to Diana Silva, which it was not. Uh, even like YouTube, right down to the last letter, was trying to correct me to Dana Silva. It was funny. Taking on Amanda Torres. Amanda Torres, at, and this is at straw weight. Amanda Torres, 8 and 5 years, 8 and 5, 29 years old, 5'3, 61 inch reach, Nova Union, and Arena Champs versus Kova de los Hard Fight representative Idana Silva, Mel Pitbull. Um, there's some highlights of Idana mostly, but 11 and 2, only 20 years old. Um, so definitely uh, an up-and-coming prospect here. She's just looking to get experience right now. Um, hasn't faced a crazy level of competition you've seen. Has lost to Quayla of Raga back in 2020, which um, honestly, it, she's got pretty short arms. Quayla Braga was just kind of able to kickbox her and stand on the outside for that fight. That's kind of the issue with Adana. She's very, very small but she's you know goes in there throws down she's got good power a lot of first round finishes with her um with her strikes um and then decent jujitsu as well uh winning her last two but again hasn't faced a great level of competition she hasn't faced a fighter with a win uh in her three fights yeah now this is going to be her third fight of 2022 she's going against amanda torres amanda torres has not fought since uh i believe yeah Two th- since well she boxed in 2021 losing a decision hasn't fought mma since 2018 where she won a decision with shuto brazil uh lost a decision to marina rodriguez when marina rodriguez was seven and oh lost a decision to priscilla cachuera um seems like she's tough so maybe she lasts the decision but idana uh is my pick here uh, amanda torres hasn't fought an mma in four years and i just don't really trust what I've seen out of her and Idana from the highlights, at least, and from uh, the training footage I've been able to see, looks like she's the more promising prospect. So Idana Silva is my pick. Yeah, man. Uh, Amanda Torres. So three and two in her last five. She's eight and five overall. Been kind of up and down in her career, and the losses are almost more impressive than the wins in her last five. I mean, Cachoeira and Marina Rodriguez, both of these women are – able to get a lot of girls out of there and uh, she went the full distance with both of them torres has finished half of her wins but yeah pretty big layoff coming in here and that's kind of a concern for me as well she fought very consistently from 2013 to 2018 and then 2018 was the last time we saw her in the cage she did have uh about scheduled about a year ago and it was canceled and then she took that boxing match shortly afterwards but this is her first time competing uh officially in mma and in four years here so She's coming up against a young prospect around 20 years old. Silva is, has about like a 90% finish rate, something like that. And coming in on six straight wins, finished every single one. And prior to that, she lost to uh, Kayla Braga, who is a pretty good fighter. We saw her on LFA not too long ago. And, you know, Silva was like 18 or 19 in that fight. And I think she's been pretty impressive so far. She's got some boxing, got some jujitsu, got some wrestling, and she looks good. She looks dangerous. And I'd say that she has, you know, most of, if not all the finishing upside in this matchup for sure. And I just think it's her time here. So uh, I'm going with Silva to win this one. Not super confident um, because she is still very young, but yeah, she just looks like a much better prospect in in my view. And she's been a lot more active. I mean, Torres coming in here off, off a lot of time off and and Silva's been finishing people. So I got to go with Eddie on a Silva in this one. Yeah, I'm a little surprised the odds are as close as they are. Minus 200 on Silva, plus 150 on uh, Torres. Seems like this would be a little more crooked uh, than that, but 
fair enough. I'm not going to be, you know, pouring money into that. But I mean, uh, right now, maybe a Silva Matsumo, Matsumoto will, you know, parlay to get that even money wouldn't be a bad idea if you can get that, those prices. So um, next fight, this one, uh, whew, this was another, this was one of the one of the ones that really did bring down the stock of this card for me. When I first looked at it, I was like, ooh, this is fun. This is going to be great. Let me watch this uh, tape on these two. And I saw Leg Americanas, and we talked about Leg Americanas last week with Jenna Bush, uh, Bishop, and uh, Luana Santos. That was a great fight, and Luana Santos looked really good in a lot of that fight. Jenna Bush, very lucky. Bishop, lucky to get out of that one. But, yeah, we got another one in here in uh, Acevedo, who I'll get to in a second. Uh, Bruno Lopez I'll be breaking down first here, 9-0. Uh, he is 29 years old out of China team, which has few fighters on this card. Obviously, that's a Brazilian team, not a team in China, um, just to, so people know. But, yeah, a couple fighters from that team fighting on this card, which I always like to see. Um, you know, he's got not the best level of wins here. His last three, five and seven, Tenerio, he knocked him out. Got an arm triangle, of Flavio Majan, which is just kind of a guy in the Brazilian regional scene. If you're good, you beat. If you're not, you lose to. But beat him, finish him with an arm triangle. And then KO of Lucas Rosa back in uh, February of this year. Been fighting pretty actively since that six-year layoff, um, which not sure exactly what happened there. But, yeah, he had quite a long layoff there, um, you know, as a knockout of Gregory Rodriguez back at Jungle Fights in their debut. So, I mean... You know, that was however long ago, and, you know, a few guys have knockouts of uh, Gregory Rodriguez on the, on their resume. Um, this is more about his opponent, Melton, uh, here. Melton is 10-3. and three. He's 27 years old. Two straight wins. Valley Tudo-style uh, fighter. Uh, got Kimura in 16 seconds of a 1-4. and four, and Carlos Silva. And it was the leg American of Leonardo. That if you go back and watch it, he gets in the side control and just puts it and he taps as soon as it, his legs have crossed his arm. So either he has the most vicious leg Americana ever or he's not facing a great level of competition. Uh, I think it might be that. Um, has three losses. Um, Jefferson Goncalves, Gun, uh, obviously not a bad level of loss at all. Um, really, all three of his losses aren't bad, but it's just – He's not beating a very good level of competition, and I just think he only takes advantage of kind of jiu-jitsu on guys who don't do jiu-jitsu, and when they do, they probably beat him. So Lopez knows jiu-jitsu. Lopez probably submits him before he gets submitted, but I don't know. This is not a great level of fight. Uh, Melton Acevedo, though, at all the tape I watched on him, very unimpressed. Like, he looks very low level. Yeah, Milton, um, to continue on, 10-3 and three fighter. He is on a two-fight win streak with two finishes, but prior to that, he was finished twice in a row. And, you know, he was fighting consistently between, like, 2014 and 16. He went 8-3 and three over that span. Didn't really fight exceptional guys. Um, and, you know, in fact, it seems like all the half-decent guys that he fought, he lost to. And coming into this one, you set it off a leg Americana and a Kimura, both under one minute. Um, neither of these opponents, so particularly good. I mean, five and three, one and four. He had one fight in 2021, and he had one fight in May of this year. I'd like to see a, a little bit more activity out of him. He hasn't been super consistent uh, with his activity over the course of his career. Bruno, Lupa, Bruno Lopez, sorry, nine and zero oh, undefeated, will be the bigger man, I believe, in this one. Um, fought most of his pro career on Jungle Fight and Thunder Fight, and you know, you said you touched on that the fact that he knocked out Robocop in his third pro fight. So. Uh, that's pretty impressive one just to have on the resume. Most recently, he fought on Thunder Fight. That was in February. He was the main event on that card. And to be honest, he also hasn't really fought very many good fighters either, with the exception of Gregory Rodriguez, really. Uh, just a four straight finish win, 78% finish rate. And also himself kind of has had some consistently consistency activity problems. Fought 2013 to 2015 consistently, then didn't see him again until 2021 and fought three times between then and now. Fighting low level guys, kind of, but better guys than Azevedo has been fighting. And he's also been slightly more active recently as well. Um, I already do kind of think he has the better skills. So I'm going to side with Bruno Lopez here. I think this one could be a little bit sloppy, though. But yeah, it got to be Bruno be Lopez for me. Yeah, I think Bruno Lopez is the better version of Malton Azevedo, which is still not a great fighter. 
Like, and so that was one that definitely before I researched, it, I was very excited. Nine and zero, ten and three. I was like, all right, sweet. And then I was like, oh, even the losses by meltdown. I was like, not bad. These are like, you know, good guy. But then you even look at the wins. It's just like you're not going to win like that against any decent level of competition. And I'm saying it, Lopez is at least decent, but you're going to have to pay for it. Minus 300. Uh, no, thank you. Plus 240 on Malton Acevedo. No, um, just going to, we're going to watch another Brazilian fight here because that's just a tough, tough ask there. Um, on to the co-main event. This is uh, one that I think should be a fun fight. I'm pretty excited about this one. I, I liked what I saw at Davi uh, Costa when I got to review him, uh, research him, and I even got to see a sandbox fight. So, uh, which in a not a good sandbox fight at that. If there is sandboxing, that's good. Um, but Davi, you know, he's a he's a he's a scrapper, man. He's got the big afro. You're gonna notice it. Leaves his head there to be guillotined quite a bit, but kind of wants to do that to be able to kind of work his uh, kind of tricky uh, top game, but. Uh, Eduardo Enrique uh, Chapolin and Eduardo Chapolin, you're going to find more of his results under 10 and 1 here for the Brazilian here, uh, 26 years old. Uh, good size here, going to be the longer guy for sure, coming off of a majority decision win that I was unable to find. But the Tiago uh, Xavier fight, I was able to watch that one and a few other ones. The Junior Assis fight uh, was impressive, but the Tiago Xavier fight was very, very good. It's back and forth. Uh, Tiago came into that fight quite ready. He was getting a lot of the better of Eduardo in that fight. Eduardo was getting, you know, kind of lit up a little bit early, but definitely a good sign for Eduardo. He was able to stick with Tiago, and I ended up finishing him with, like, a really beautiful combination, standing KO at the end. But Eduardo was clearly kind of pouring it on and taking over in that fight. And uh, I think there could be a lot of similarities here. I do think Davi is going to come out. Like a, like a pistol. He's going to come out hot. He's going to come out throwing everything he's got in all his shots. He's got, you know, a leaping hook type of guy. Uh, he does remind me a lot of John Dodson, both in his movement and, like, how he fights. Now, I'm not saying he's as good as John Dodson, obviously. Uh, but it's very similar. A lot of, like, kind of darting in and out with the movement uh, and kind of throwing, you know, some good straight shots. But his looping hooks are, have a lot of power on them. And I think a lot of times kind of fighters think, the shell's enough against that, and he ends up breaking through the shell a lot, um, and that could be something I think Eduardo goes to a little bit too much. Another thing is Eduardo's been taken down in a few fights from his body kicks. They're a little bit kind of slow and do leave him to get potentially taken down, so I'm curious if he uses those against Davi because I do think Davi's going to have to get this fight to the ground. I think the reach is going to be too big of an issue for the most part. Uh, at least early on, too. So, But I think this could be an interesting one. But, I mean, Eduardo really does look the part, is what I do want to say. Even the Clayton Rodriguez fight, absolutely fantastic fight there. Really an entertaining fight. Uh, showed showed his level as well. Um, you know, he's beating a good level. He's putting away most of his opponents. Um, his striking is very, very um, solid, very technical. And, you know, the other thing is Davi Cosa. Costa, uh, also known as Davi Bittencourt, where you're going to find more of his results. Uh, he's just not fighting a great level of competition, and he's fighting in a lot of very small organizations as well. Um, you know, I mean, his, his one loss coming to Ferreira there uh, with a pretty quick rear naked choke where, uh, I mean, Davi came out, he kind of blew his load in like two minutes, and then all of a sudden was finished. And, I mean, the way he tapped out of that, um, was not exactly, you know, encouraging with how he tapped out of that submission. But, yeah, just not a great level. I think that he is going to go in there and fight like a dog. I, but Eduardo should be able to take this one. But it, it just – sometimes he's a little bit too much in that kind of spar mode for me, Eduardo, and can allow his opponent to kind of dictate where the fight takes place a little too much. So it's not like a slam dunk for me like a lot of people. But um, – and I just have a feeling Davi might surprise some people by one at the balls to pick it. So we'll go with Eduardo here, no bet. Yeah, I think uh, you pretty much hit the nail on the head there, um, Costa. I mean, halfway through 2021, we were looking at a 4-3 and three fighter here and then wins his next seven. Just fought an absolutely insane amount of times last year. Has yeah. one fight uh, this year so far. And 
10 of his 11 wins have come inside the distance. This guy's a finisher coming up against a guy who I think is a really good prospect in Eduardo Henrique, who's uh, 10 and one, 80% finish rate. That one loss, Clayson Rodriguez came into that fight as a five and zero prospect. And then after that loss rattled off another five straight wins coming into this one. And, you know, you mentioned this part. I really agree with the fact that I think that uh, Henrik has just fought a much stronger strength of schedule by the looks of it. Um, he's already been challenged at that next level by Clayson Rodriguez, and he responded well to that challenge. You know, he won another five fights after that. Um, I think he has the stuff to win this co-main event tomorrow. I feel like uh, we see this fight pretty similarly, so I'm not going to spend too much time. But, yeah, I think he has the stuff to win. I think early um, – Davi could come out here, like you said, come out scrapping. I think that he does have some win equity early, but I just feel like as this fight goes on, as they start to settle in, I just think that Henrique is uh, is more technical. He's the more polished guy. I think he's more ready um, to take the next step. So I'm going to go with Henrique to win this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a minus 305 price tag. It's rough uh, for me, plus 245. It is one I'm not going to be able to find a route to bet on either way. And, uh, I mean, when I look overall, I am siding with the favorites in these uh, fights so far. Um, this, is, to me, is the underdog so far that I do feel, you know, um, be, well, I guess Torres would be my underdog, like, could say, just based on the circumstances. But this is another one. I just, yeah, there's it, there's something that, that intrigues me about Davi Ramos, and it's our uh, Davi Costa, I should say, Davi Bittencourt, you're going to find. And Eduardo Henrique. Um, very, very good. He looks, he, he does remind me a lot of Matsumoto uh, earlier in the card. They're pretty similar types of guys. And again, Eduardo Chaplin, you're going to find a lot more results of his fights on as well. So uh, should be a good one there at 125 too. So Davi is cutting down to 125. Um, we'll see how he responds to that. A lot of his fights have been at bantamweight, uh, even though he does have a frame for 125. Uh, we're on to the main event here. Uh, this I think is a very I think this should be the main event first first and foremost. Um, Italo Gomez, no, he didn't win excitingly, but he won effectively in his last fight. He won, I believe, thirty twenty seven on all three scorecards. Correct? I'm pretty sure when I yeah. when I rewatched it, I didn't watch the scorecards. Yeah, but like it was like yeah, it was just one where he somehow got his opponent uh, Melk. Uh, we we both picked Italo in that fight, but. Got Melk to really play right into his game plan of uh, initiating a lot of clinch, initiating a lot of grappling. That's where Gomez's butter is breaded, or uh, bread is buttered, I should say. Uh, butter is breaded. Um, but uh, Wellington Prado, Wellington Predator, I uh, will be breaking down first, or I will be bringing down first 12 and 2 for the 22 year old, 5'8. Uh, good size for him. Another fighter out of China team here. Two straight wins for him coming into this. Uh, after the Marcus Dos Santos loss by decision, uh, 32 and 13 fighters. So uh, learned a lesson there, came back with two high-quality wins, uh, Tiago Machina, Machina or Tiago Silva in the last one, uh, wore him down with the grappling and then knocked him out in round two. Very impressive, almost knocked him out in round one as well. Bruno Viana knocked him out as well. Good grappler as well, but the, uh, Muay Thai is very, very good out of him. Um, and it's gotten better and better. Uh, go back and watch that Joe Anderson Brito fight. It's one of the better fights you can watch uh, tape wise. Really back and forth in that one. And uh, he just, uh, Joe Anderson just was able to rock him and outlast him a little bit. And uh, I mean, there are several times where Prado uh, nearly had finishes in that fight. Uh, he ended up getting put away with the rear naked choke pretty much out of exhaustion in that one. Um, but yeah, good Muay Thai, good size. Um, he's exciting. I like his grappling as well here, and I think that he's going to learn a, I think he's going to learn a lot from, from Melky's performance where you just don't initiate the clinch and grappling only against Gomez. you got to make this a full mm. MMA fight, um, and, you know, sorry, I just got the battery warning, so um, on my laptop, but we'll be good. Um, but either way, um, I do favor Prado on the feet. I think on the ground it's very close, but I do favor – Gomez on the ground here. Another thing is Gomez was fighting at 155 the last fight, and he didn't look all that in that great a shape. Uh, now uh, I like him coming down to 145. He's looking very sharp from what I've seen here. But I do question how much he's going to be able to push 
uh, the pace in this one. I think that Wellington Prado might have an advantage in that regard, too. I think Gomez needs to really slow the fight down. Uh, he does have that slam finish. Um, he's got an arm finish, a arm finish, but mostly known for the grappling here. Um, I just think that uh, Gomez is going to have some trouble on the feet, and I do think Prado uh, is willing to grapple a little too much, though. So that's where I'm kind of stuck here. Uh, I've been kind of going back and forth here, but I'm going to edge towards uh, Gomez ever so slightly here. I just think that he's going to have the IQ and kind of the guile here to kind of get to another not super thrilling, uh, you know, decision, but effective decision and just – uh, Prado's shown in too many fights for me that he's willing to grapple, and even when he's the worst grappler, still willing to grapple. He's shown in a few of these fights, um, and I do. I am concerned with Gomez wearing down as he gets to down as he gets down to 145. But I gotta trust what I've seen so far, and I do like the experience of this being his second main event. So I'm gonna go with the Tala Gomez by a close decision, though. Yeah, Gomez is making his second LFA appearance once again in the main event. Um, started his career 7-0, then in 2019 he goes 1-2, and two, two losses to really good fighters, and then from 2020 on he's fought once per year, won all three fights, including impressive performance last time out um, in the main event. I mean, it wasn't, was it the most thrilling edge of your seat fight? No, but he fought a, a really good guy there and uh, and got a good solid win, so I mean, I personally was impressed. Um, he's sh he's pretty sharp at distance, good movement, footwork, and has a good offensive grappling game as well. He's a pretty good scrambler. The wrestling is is okay. It's definitely serviceable. Um, and he was also going to be the bigger guy in the cage, I believe, which uh, is going to serve him well, I think, to try to execute the game plan that I think he's probably going to try to execute. Uh, Wellington Prado, on the other hand, making his LFA debut in the main event, just like Gomez did in his debut. And Prado's really young at 20, at 22 years old. I think this is a guy that still could be quite good. You know, he started his career 6-0, runs into Joe Anderson Brito, you know, lost in a really exciting fight, submitted in the second round, um, knocked out Everton Freitas in his next one. And that's a guy who beat Gomez. Um, won another three fights after that, becomes the SFT interim champ, lost about to crown the undisputed champ, but he did win his last two fights via knockout. He's got a 92% finish rate. Uh, you know, this guy gets people out of there, but I agree with you. Uh, you know, the size, the experience, um, just kind of the savvy of Gomez is, is what is, is what's speaking to me in this matchup. And uh, I think that, you know, there's going to be some big exchanges. There's going to be some big moments, but then, you know, later in the rounds, um, kind of the back half, you know, after the two and a half minute mark, we're going to see Gomez kind of like, all right, time to lock in and uh, and get this takedown, secure some control time. And I just feel like after three rounds, probably going to be Gomez getting his hand raised uh, at the uh, decision. At the decision. Yeah, I, I Prado's the more exciting guy. Gomez, I think, is the better MMA fighter um, at this point. And I do think Gomez, it will uh, pay off that he's losing the extra 10 pounds. I think that it is going to be throughout the camp. He's been disciplined. He's been focused. Um, and I think at 145, he's going to be massive because at 155, he looked perfectly big. Um, so uh, really exciting fight here. Uh, exciting card, man. It's uh, been a really good breakdown here. Um, as always, shout out to Norton MMA, my new stream yard home here. So full reptile collective, uh, you know, go check them out. Norton 10% off your order, whatever, you know, all that. But yes, oh, honestly, shout out to Norton. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Lucky Locks, as always. It's a pleasure. I had to break down this card with you. Um, and, uh, you know, it's still, I, I think it's just going to be a fun card to watch. Um, the bets here, maybe you're a little bit lighter on the bets overall here just because, I mean, you, this is Brazil on Brazil crime here. There's going to be some chaos here. But uh, I do think that Gomez in the main event is a perfectly good single shot and uh, most likely going to take it at minus 120 currently, plus 100 on Prado. I think Prado's got a lot of exciting tape, so uh, he's more exciting guy, so I could see it kind of remaining around this price, maybe a little bit better, mm -hmm. but either way. Uh, should be a good card. Uh, we got the CFFC tonight. Lucky Lux, do you have any CFFC picks you want to just share with anybody real quick? Yeah, so yeah, I played, so I played, I, I played I, Kenley St. Louis um, at minus 115. He's now like minus 170, minus 180. I don't know if I'm really crazy about it um, at that price. I do still think he wins, you know, if you want like a, some D-gen action. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with the price that I got. I do think that he wins. Yeah, uh, the record top, isn't the best, so people overlook him a little bit. But I, I think he gets the job done tonight. Yeah, but it should be should be good fights. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday fights. 
uh, UFC breakdown on the channel with Lewis of Norton MMA already. And uh, we will be back with the next LFA breakdown. Uh, but thank you guys all for joining us. But we are out. Have a good weekend, everybody. Peace.